Well, Kurt, uh, they were pretty clear a week ago that, that they wanted you in San Diego. Yeah. Was that your guys' preference, you know, through this process? I think it was. You know, we talk a lot about uh, the experience for our for our players and our coaches, and being able to. Not that the the bowl here in Boise isn't a, a great experience, but we play here six times a year, and it's always good when we can get out of town and go experience something different. You know, I think we were there last time in 1908, so it's obviously been a while. None of these guys have been to this bowl before. I think it's also uh, great for recruiting. Obviously, down in Southern California, a lot of our guys are from down there, so a lot of their families are going to be able to come up and, and see them play. So we're we're excited. Over the last seven days, was was there another option at all that you guys were, were looking at, or was this pretty much what, what you guys were, were yeah, planning on? You know, there really wasn't, but there was just so many things that we had to wait for. You know, I I, I wished we could get this news out earlier, but just so many things needed to happen and. You know, you get into this whole new five and seven team getting in, and so that throws a huge wrinkle, I think, in just how the bowl committee looks at those kinds of things. And so it was just a matter of us waiting and seeing what the opportunities were. But San Diego has, you know, been a part of our conversation over the last week and a half, without a doubt. Was this not being as successful of a season as, as some in the past for you guys? Mm -hmm. uh, some talk that maybe this would be a year to, to stay in Boise. Is there? A situation where, where you guys would see that as a realistic option or like you said your preference to get guys out and get them a new experience mm -hmm. you know it's probably a little bit of both I think that uh, again we go back to that experience and when these guys play you know six home games here over the course of the year it's always nice to get out and experience something different but I don't think there'd be anything wrong with us playing uh, in the Idaho Potato Bowl I think it just matters of you know how the season ends up and what the opportunities are and what options we have and we certainly talked about it um, but San Diego just seemed for, for us the appropriate choice this year, and we're just fortunate that we had a chance to say yes. So, Do you like the idea that the teams, the players on this current team have not gone there? Because nobody I, on the team would. I do, you know, and I, I think that even had a little to do with the decision that was made by the conference to do the 2015-2019 two, swap with BYU. There were a lot of reasons why they did that, but I think one of them was to just avoid teams playing in the same bowl. As you guys know, you know, there was a time where in four or five years we played in Las Vegas three of the years and they do a great job down there as well. But when you have players going there for, you know, the third time and maybe a possibility of going to the same game four times in a row, you know, they, they, they need to experience different things. And so uh, that probably ended up being okay for that particular reason. Um, but uh, I, I'm really happy with our with our opportunity here to go. The, the people at the Point City Bowl just do a great job, and we're really looking forward to How it. How did it kind of so, go down today? Was there any kind of last-minute discussions or things in play, or did you just kind of wait for a phone call and say yeah, it was official, or what? Probably not so much about the location, about where we were going, but who we played, obviously. I think one of the things that they were waiting for was – you know whether the ACC was going to get two game, two teams into the the top six bowls, and so what that would have done maybe is open up something in Detroit where then the MAC teams have to juggle a little bit. And so knowing that the MAC was contracted with San Diego, we just had to wait, and uh, we probably were fairly confident that it was going to be San Diego, but we really didn't have an idea of who we might be playing. So when, when did you get the call, or when did you officially find out? I found out about one o'clock today. Is this, is this bump bowl process, is this stressful? <laughs> you know, I, I, it's not real stressful probably unless you're not sure whether or not you're going. You know, I think one of the things that we're fortunate uh, in terms of how our conference looks at it is, you know, let's say there was no spots. I mean, there'd be, there'd be two teams looking on the outside, maybe not, not participating in the postseason. So I would say very stressful if you're not sure whether or not you're going to be in one. Um, but for us, I mean, you know, we we were we knew we were going to get into one, obviously. And stress in terms of just trying to answer all the questions from our fans, you know, and the media wanting to know where we're going. And but there's really, I, I didn't have a lot of control over that. So any dickering on opponents? I mean, is that, or is they pretty much just yeah. tell you you're getting Northern Illinois? Pretty much, um, you know, that has a lot to do with ESPN and trying to get the teams in the right places and having the best matchups. And, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about getting Northern Illinois. I think it's going to be a great game. And, uh, you know, their record over the last five or eight years is is pretty darn good. So I'm sure we're going to face a great team when we go to San Diego. What is uh, your, your kind of role in terms of, you know, and how they negotiate what bowl game Boise State's going to? And obviously it's, it's a little bit different than, um, you know, maybe a couple of years ago when everything was slotted, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
my role pretty much is is a part of a bigger group. I think there's constant communication between all the athletic directors, uh, the conference commissioner and, and, and Craig's staff, uh, the Bulls themselves that are contracted through the Mountain West, and then obviously ESPN plays a big role in that. And so it's probably a mixture of both. I can tell them what we want and I can tell them what we prefer, but at the end of the day, it's, it's certainly not my decision. I'm a part of that. I, I'm able to provide, you know, provide input, but at the same time, that's just determined with so many other factors in it. So it's probably more of a waiting game more than anything to, to see. Like I said before, the, the, the destination, I don't think it was the big mystery to everybody. It was more so about, you know, who we're going to be able to play. And the so opponents are obviously a big deal to you guys. I mean, was there ever a, a time where, the Mac could have possibly traded with somebody, or was there ever any talk of that, or was yeah. it your understanding all along it was going to stay in the Mac? I think there was some talk about it, but it's it's really not up to the Mountain West to determine that. That's between the two conferences. Maybe that that might be negotiating. If it was a, you know, if the Pac-12 was maybe looking to swap, or maybe the Mac wanted to swap, that would be a, a deal that would be arranged between the two conferences. So. Uh, I don't know how much of that really went on. Um, I hadn't really heard of those conversations going on because, you know, the MAC was was obviously pretty successful this year as well in terms of getting teams in. So, did yeah. Did you submit to the Mountain West? We want to go to the Point Setable, or here's our list in order of where we want to go, or how does that work? Uh, you know, the Point Setta showed interest uh, early. Uh, we were excited about that. You know, based on our record this year, I would probably say that our choices maybe weren't as robust as they might be in the past and so uh, it was probably either going to be you know in San Diego or, or possibly you know being here in Boise. Poinsettia or Poinsettia? You tell me. <laughs> Is there a T in there? Points, poinsettia just doesn't sound right so I go Poinsettia. What would that sound? It, sounds like, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like there's an event at the San Diego Zoo at, this, at SeaWorld yeah. on an aircraft carrier. I mean it's yeah. the beach is right there. I mean it yeah. seems like you mentioned all things considered, it's got to be a pretty good spot. It's it's a great spot, and when we were there last time, if any of you guys were able to go, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's when we did the Navy SEALs. Oh yeah, uh, training yeah. where they were on the beach doing you know all kinds of things for an hour, and we sent all that information via video and all that back to Boise, and so it's a great experience. I mean, you're right, they they have the zoo, they go to Sea World, they have lunch on an aircraft carrier. We have a battle of bands on there. You know, the gas lab district down there is always a fun place for our fans to be. And so I think it's it's a it's a really a great opportunity for four days for not just our team and our coaches, but everybody that's going to be able to make the trip down. So you, you mentioned uh, the fact that you guys kind of knew what, what bowl game you guys were going to be going to in, in terms of the poinsettia. But um, mm -hmm. how much does it help? The, does the Boise State brand help this time of year? It always seems like, a, you know, if a bowl game can get their hands on Boise yeah. State, they, they want them. Well, I think it's attractive. I mean, I don't I don't think that's a secret, even, you know, with, with with an eight and four record, I still think there's a lot of people out there that are interested in having Boise State in town. And what's great for us, in fact, our president and I were talking about this the other day, you know, we're, we're taking the brand down there for Boise State football, but I think it's bigger than that. I think it's about the university and our, and our, and our community, the state of Idaho. Um, we kind of, you know, look at ourselves as a, as a pretty powerful national brand right now that, that people like to attach their name to. And, but I don't think it's just about football. I really do. I think it's about our institution and this community and the state of Idaho. So I think it's good for everybody. Would you, uh, what was your take on what happened in the Arizona Bowl with, with two Mountain West teams having to play each other in their bowl game? Well, unfortunate that that's happening. But then I also look at it as just an opportunity for these teams to be participating in the postseason. I mean, I think Colorado State was, you know, if you had to look at the three teams, probably the the leader of the group and then Nevada and San Jose and and that five and seven thing I mean that's just that threw a big wrench not only in the bowl games that you know the Mountain West teams were participating in but um, I, I'm just happy for our conference that we have all these teams in this bowl I think it's unfortunate I don't think it's ever happened before um, in someone was 70s I think but you know it, it when we were on the conference call with the ADs uh, earlier this week one of the things that was mentioned I don't know if you remember a couple years ago I think it was UCLA and Stanford played the last game of the season and then six days later played in the Pac-12 championship game. Mm -hmm. So it happens, maybe not so much like this. It's, it's uh, like I said, it's probably unfortunate that they're playing each other in the conference. I don't think they played each other this year though. So, you know, from, from that standpoint, um, 
you know, you can't, you just can't make everybody happy. And there was a lot of conversation about that and what we would do as a conference to try to make it as best we could for everybody. And I think at the end of the day, based on the options that the Mountain West had, um, we, we probably got the best. When you look at uh, yeah. the matchups you guys have in your bowl games as a conference, and I know the Pac-12 struggles with this as well, and I wonder if it's maybe a geographical thing, but mm -hmm. you, you, you happy with what you what you guys were able to get, or would you like to see more you know, 9-10 type win teams to, yeah. to, to get a chance to play against? Well, I, you know, if you talk to our football coaches and our players, they want to play the best team out there. Um, but you know, these, these bowls are contracted to, to certain conferences. And, and I think as time goes by, when we meet as a conference with ADs and presidents, we'll talk about those kinds of things and who do we really want to be associated with. But right now, you know, as you all know, I mean, there's, there's 40 bowl games out there. And um, I think that, that the bowl committees and the NC2A and the conference commissioners and the ADs and the presidents are going to rally around this spring and make sure that this doesn't that this doesn't happen again. I don't know exactly what the plan's going to be, but it is certainly something that that needs to be discussed. You so saw the uh, Dean Ridgeway, the Poinsettia Bowl rep, was down there at the San Jose State game. I know mm -hmm. we talked to you there. Was that kind of the first time where we really kind of became, I don't know, that there was like serious interest on both sides or had that been going on before? Yeah, when did not, it kind of... not long before. Okay. You know, they they had they had reached out as all the Bulls do. I mean, you guys know you're you're up in our press box. We've had over the years, every darn bowl that, you know, we can possibly get into. They're here visiting and, you know, cultivating that relationship so that we get to know them. So when they do pick up the phone, we know who the heck it is and we can have a, hopefully a productive conversation about the possibilities that we can get into. But um, we had some minor, I wouldn't say minor, but some good conversation before that. That was the first face-to-face. -face. You know, uh, Mark, Mark Neville down there, who's the new director, has been just terrific with us and called me this morning and said, hey, you know, we're just so excited about you guys and can't wait for you to get here. And so we're, you know, I, I feel like they really wanted us and we're real happy to be going there. And, and I think it's going to be a privilege for us to play a team like Northern Illinois. And hopefully we can we can go down there and do it the Bronco way to finish out the season. That's good.